welcome back to Ravenport for episode one with me, Mr. Sealy P. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm back here on Ravenport. I mentioned when I did the map tour, it's been knocking on six years. Six years! I can't get mid around it. It's absolutely insane. But we're here on Ravenport. I'm driving in, sort of pop up, have a look at the lighthouse, come to the visitor centre, take in the scenery. I have got, actually, um, it, I know it's uh, a Zolonka one, but it looks very much like, um, it looks like a VW at the front. Sort of T4 sort of thing. Pretty much the same colour as my van. But anyway, I thought, you know what, let's go for a different vehicle. I haven't used one of these before. So let's grab this. Um, as you can see, top right, we have no money. We do have some land. Why am I back? That is the question. Of all the maps of all the places and all the world. Well, it was off the back of the map tour. Exactly what I just said. Uh, let's get driving. And it was that weird thing that I couldn't... I just, yeah, when FS19 released, this was the map. This was the new map, you know. And um, like I said on the map tour, it brought horses, it brought cotton, it brought all sorts of stuff that we hadn't really had before. Landscaping. Um, and I just thought, you know what, it would be pretty cool to come back six years later. With all the advances, all the new stuff, all the things we can do. That being said, I might still do cotton. Because I was only saying at the end of my last Let's Play on Court Farm, I haven't really done cotton, haven't really done sugar cane, haven't really done poplars for a long time, anything like that. I saw everyone jump straight into the... Um, the new crop types of carrots and that kind of stuff, which is brilliant. I absolutely love all of that. But um, am I playing ultra realistically? No, uh, you know, you know me. We'll, we'll use a bit of stuff. There are going to be a few mods that are going to reappear that you've seen before. You know, CSZ pack, those kind of things. Maybe um, I am. Uh, I know it's difficult. I'm going to try to use different stuff. I know it's at the start of every let's play. Then I default to the same plows. I default to the same. You know, because. They work because the price is right and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, so the reason I'm back. When I left Ravenport all those years ago, I never actually sold the farm. Um, I kind of just kept hold of it. I had a sort of tenant farmer. It was leased-ish. I'd get paid every now and again. A bit of money would come through. Not very much, but, you know, we'd get a bit. And just to keep hold of the land. Now, all my satellite fields, all the fields I had previously owned, have been sold off. The farm was run into decline pretty much it was run into the ground um where there's an ongoing lawsuit we have a bit of a court case going on a lot of the machinery and equipment was sold and the animals were all sold um so i'm a little bit devastated um we got a few bits and bobs here there's a few bits that are owned by um ravenport financial we've got the uh rail station here pacific rail with um i think they've got some container stuff because you've got shipping coming in from the coast and then you've got the rail stuff sent off around and stuff comes here and then goes off by ship that's all happening so i've got my land i mean that's it the old farm is there um we're going to go and see what kind of state it's in there are considerable debts which i'm hoping to clear and it's just that thing of let's just play I, I just wanted you know just wanted to come back on him it just seemed to work and i thought what better way than to revisit the old farm now the farm that this map now comes with is not there and um, because i came on to here on farm manager the well, farm manager and start from scratch there's no farm um so there's no farm machinery and equipment i know a few people did message me and i i was seriously considering it and this kind of took over and my initial plan was to come onto here on new farmer and i was just going to use i was going to do a let's play where you just use the base game equipment not the base of what i mean is the equipment you start with i was just going to do it this is what you get let's start with this let's go um that was the plan you know just come and do that then the whole thing of you know i was talking to miss silly p and miss silly p said what about you know i kind of could you not go back to a map because i was really i didn't know what to do i i've i've been talking about this a lot I've been at a crossroads. I've been at a, in a strange place where I just didn't know. I don't know. Not necessarily lost my mojo. Not necessarily lost 
the passion for the game, I hadn't lost the passion for the game at all. I just didn't know what direction to head in, you know? So she was saying, you know, why don't you just go back and do a map you've done before? And I thought, well, I could do that and mould over a few different sort of ideas and things. And then kind of thought, you know what? Let's give it a go. So anyway, what we do have... I never got very far with building this here, but it looks like they are working on it now. We should be able to deliver things here, supply it for building. So let's check out the farm, shall we? See what kind of state it's in, see what we've got. Well, I can already say it's... Um, we're looking a little bit overgrown. A little bit is an understatement. We may have some work to do. Blimey. Now, if you're new to my channel, or at least have been new to my channel in the intervening years between when I did this, if you haven't gone back over and watched any of my old Let's Plays or anything like that, that's fine, this will be new to you. Um, if you did watch those, this feels really weird. I, I yeah. Oh. The old big bud's still here. The only piece of equipment that re remains. Um, how well, there's definitely no animals, I know that. The pens are a little bit overgrown. So what did we have? We had cows. We had a silage clamp. Looks like the manure heap has been moved, but that's oh, that's, that, that's even looking just a little bit overgrown. Um, well, that's the last the remaining silage by the look of it. Clamp's still there though. We had horses and we had chickens. Again, all a little bit overgrown. It just, I suppose, it's over time. It's just gradually the land's taken over. That stark sort of rock face we had. It looks like there's been a bit of erosion. Again, grass has grown. Chicken pen. We had the field next door here, which was just grass. Still grass. Nothing's been done with it other than that. We had a water point down here. Looks like someone's built a shed. Oh, the water point's still there. There you go. Look, water point's there. Now, just thinking, because we do have some debts. I don't know if that will cover the debts. Do I keep that and pay the debts off gradually? That does start, I mean, it doesn't have a front three-point link. I'd rather have a tra tractor with a three-point. Hmm. Give that some thought. What is this garage? Oh, does it not open? Oh, will I get my van in there? Maybe. I've got all the shed space. We've got some wheat. Oh, it says chicken food. It's not a full pallet, but there's a, there's some chicken feed. We have no chickens, but we've got a little bit of chicken feed. That's it. <laughs> bit of silage, bit of chicken feed. What about the hayloft? Let's check out the hayloft. How are we looking? Okay. Just over 41,000 litres of hay, 32,000 litres of straw. We could make up a very, very weak batch of total mixed ration. <laughs> we could buy one cow, maybe, um, because that would run out in absolutely no time. So that's not going to help very much. I suppose we could get a cow. And then we could take it off to market if we find somewhere with some magic beans. Who knows what could happen? We could have a bean stalk by morning. Golden goose eggs and all sorts of stuff. You just never know with me what's going to happen. Um, what I'm going to do, we'll take the... Um, I think, yeah, we're going to take the big bud up to the store. Is it still Carlos Reliable? Was that what it was? We'll have to go and have a look. We'll take that up and sell it. I'm going to have to do a little bit of contract work, I guess. We need to build up some money. 
and then we'll start rebuilding. We'll start clearing. We'll start. What do I want to do? Horses? Do I want to do horses? Chickens are an easy one. I say it's an easy one. If we can get any harvesting contracts that might leave a little bit left over. I don't know how it's going to work on this map. It's always the same. You come to a new farm, new farm era. Actually, that's a good point. We do own... So we own this plot. We own the field next to it. I don't know if the fields and plots have changed. Uh, let's just double check something. So on here. Right, so that's the plot the farm's on. Ah, oh, see, that's interesting, because the plot next to it only used to be that, didn't it? So we've got that. That's all part of that one big plot, which actually takes in the construction there. So do we own that? Okay, maybe. The restaurant's just there. We don't own the sale point. It's the sale point. And the field next door. Okay, that's got... Is that barley? We can go and check in a minute. Um, and that's it. No vehicles, no machinery. Well, I say no vehicles. We've got the one. Nothing else at all. Like I said, Ravenport Financial own the rail yard. And that's it. The world is my mollusk. We can do whatever we want. So, I'm going to move this out of the way. Park it up. Let's take the uh, big bud. God, that does sound ropey. <laughs> I was hoping it sounded a bit better than that. Look at the size difference, that is crazy. Righto. If it's running, it looks an absolute date. I wonder where this was left. Anyway. Let's go. I'll take this up to the store. We'll see what mega money we can get for it. And then what I'm probably going to do is, if we've got enough to pay off the loan rate, if we haven't, I'll pay off what I can pay off. Um... That's all I can do, really. And then we'll look in the message boards up at the store. That's normally where you find them. See if we've got any contracts available. And I need to start making some money. We need to do something, don't we? I hear tell of gold in the mountains. Who knows? There's all sorts of cool stuff. It's that, that point you find yourself at. Always at the start. Where you just don't know where it's going to go. You might have an idea. You might have a kernel of an idea. You might have no idea at all. And you start doing stuff and things progress, new things come out. It might be there's things you want to try out you haven't used before and that kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden, you find yourself going down a route. Not always necessarily the route you want to go down, but <laughs> it's a route nonetheless. It's still Carlos in charge. It's just like old times. How cool is that? So my question now is, do I, do I want to sell the vehicle and then see how much debt we're in? Do I want to see how much debt we're in and then sell the vehicle? Problem is, if I see how much debt we're in and then hope I'm going to get enough money to pay off the debt and don't, I'll be disappointed. If I sell the vehicle, I've got some money, and then if I find out what the debt is, at least I can pay a chunk of it off, if not all of it. I don't know. What do you reckon? <laughs> Obviously, the next problem is, as well, I don't know where... Um, where would it likely be... Is it, just don't think. Is there a, there's a door over here. I do this every time. I don't own the land. I'll just keep clicking buttons until oil cans, trolley jack, lift. Oh, there we go. Cool, cool, cool. What's it worth? Hundred and eighty-six thousand three hundred eighty-four. I can't afford, I can't repaint it. There's a little bit of repair. Okay, well that's no good. Sell it as it is then. 186, 384. Question is... <laughs> that's a good start, by anyone's standards. Is it enough to pay off the loan? That's the question. I don't know. That's what we are going to do as well. 
We'll check the message boards. Oh, this is amazing. I feel so cool being back. Oh, so we check. What do we owe? 205. Okay, well, we can't pay it all off. We can, we can pay a few chunks off. Farm dogs over the moon that we can pay a big load off. Oh no, I pressed the wrong thing. <gasps> no, 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 no. I was borrowing, not not paying off. No, 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 repay. Oh, that was close. No, D. Come on, bud. Oh, man, we still got 20 grand to pay. Fair enough. He's not happy, is he? Hey, we're paying off the loan, dude. Chill. Chill out. Right, I got him to stop. <laughs> right, okay, well, I mean, could be worse. We've got 1,384 in our pocket. Yes. Slap up binge at Mrs. Miggins Pie Shop. Um, but, yeah, not enough to do anything else. So, I guess jobs is the next thing. I'll find the job board. Let's see if there's anything available. Um, if there is, we'll pick up some contracts. And we'll get the ball rolling. I... Actually, you know what we can do as well while we're here? All forlorn. Um, used vehicles. What have we got available? What is the Voucher T series? Rate you two grand. Very nice indeed. Trailer for 12. That could come in handy. Um, the big bud, obviously, we just sold. That's no good. I mean, obviously, we've got nothing. So as things start to come up, we're going to have to start picking things up. Second hour mark is always a good place to start. Oh, it doesn't matter. What's done is done. Let's see what's available. So I've been talking with the big kahuna, chatting over old times, what's been going on in the few years we've been apart. I have been told categorically I'm not allowed to leave my equipment here at the yard, <laughs> which I did right up until the last episode, I think, um, before. But we have got some contracts. Um, hang on a minute. Oh no. Fertilizing. Harvesting, plowing. Harvest and plowing. What? Right, harvester, tractor and trailer. Tractor, weight and plow. Does anyone see a fertilizer spreader anywhere? <sighs> no, 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 no. What have I done? I can't do the fertilizing contract. I didn't borrow equipment. I just accepted it. Why did I do that? Um, okay. How can I go about doing this? It's not going to make me a lot of money. Oh, I don't know. Hang on. Just, what's that going to pay me? 26986. If I can lease a really cheap tractor, really small, <laughs> and lease a small fertilizer spreader, even if I have to go backwards and forwards, just really cheap, I could still make a bit of money on that, even though I'm having to pay some money out. Oh, why did I do that? Isn't it funny, you come off the, off the end of one series where you've got stuff and your brain's like, oh yeah, you know, I, I'll do that. Elmer, we had loads of stuff. Doing fertilising jobs wasn't a problem. Oh, obviously just completely misjudged that. Well, actually, what are we harvesting? Canola, okay. Well, that won't feed chickens, but, you know, we'll see. And at this point, again, I probably wouldn't keep hold of anything. I'm thinking, I might get rid of the... Hmm, I might do pigs... Like, we'll say properly. Actually, where are we harvesting? Field 5. Now, if I recall correctly, Field 5 was one of the big ones, wasn't it? Yep. <laughs> of course it is. These ones made me some money, some serious money. Oh, no, that's Field 5. What's that one, then? 8. What have I got to do in Field 8? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, field eight is the fertilising. Field six is the ploughing. Okay, that's, it's going to take a while, but okay. But at least we borrowed this. We don't have a harvester.
this is what we're given let's crack on so we're going to head out to field five root 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 wow it just feels so weird so weird uh we're gonna bang our left that's right isn't it Get the beacons on. I'll head out. I'll worry about looking at where we've got to take it to and all that kind of thing. Oh, I can't believe I made that mistake with the fertilizer. Anyway, we've got 1,384. We'll have a little bit more in a little while. And then um, the adventure begins. Like I say, I don't know what I'm going to end up doing. I could have spent the, you know, I don't know how long the next play will go on for. Let's just return to Ravenport, you know. Mississippi P was bouncing ideas and you know we were talking about uh, Ravenport revisited um, Ravenport rejuvenated but you know we could it was all different ideas and I said well we are returning um, how long for like I said I don't know we'll see if we can get the farm up sorted tidied even if we just get it to a point where we've got some new equipment some new machinery do a few jobs, make a bit of money, tidy it all up, and then we can release it, then that's fine. This doesn't have to be a make a fortune, build an empire. It's just about getting the farm back up and running. I was going to check, wasn't I? I didn't do it on the map tour in the end. I just remembered. Further up the way, there used to be that rickety old bridge. I don't know if that's still there. Looks like it might have been rebuilt. It might be a proper bridge up there now. Actually, we don't have anywhere to live, do we? I might have to... I might have to so the house is being rebuilt. Maybe that, that could be my house. I don't know. We're going to need to um, sleep somewhere as well. We're going to sort that out too. There was definitely a railway. The railway ran down here, didn't it? Because I'm just thinking, you, I'm sure you never used to just be able to cut across here. The railway was there. Uh, field 5 is... Coming up on the right yep by blocking traffic and um, let's get off the let's get off the road beacons off Am I going to go as productions heavy as I did on Alma? No, I'm, I'm not. Am I going to do some? I might. Am I going to go as heavy? No. Um, there are still some of the features from Alma on here. So we've got the, the expanded bakery, we've got the corn dryer, those kind of things. Um, we did pumpkins, we did other bits and bobs, didn't we, on, um, on Alma. We didn't do apples when we did the fruit greenhouses which we could do now this was originally was this the inception of Mr. CP's farm services I'm trying to think it was wasn't it guess what would have made sense because I know I was talking about before I had a lot of people message me and saying um, about different ways of you know, starting a new one and where to go to and a lot of people said about um, going to another US map which this is and taking my equipment with me from Elmer that was something that was suggested um, or taking the finances with me so the money I'd earn take that with me and move on you know it's, you know so many different people with so many different suggestions and, and it's interesting to see and it was also interesting as I was going through the list of possibilities how many I've done before you know it's the longer you do it the harder it becomes I guess anyway yeah 
I, I like the challenge of doing this. I, I like the, you know, we haven't got anything. We are going to have to do some work. We are going to have to put some hours in. And I don't mind putting the hours in. I don't mind spending ages doing contracts. I don't mind with small equipment gradually working my way up. It's very interesting how quickly people forget during a Let's Play where you, where you start at the start and when you get to. People watch me doing, oh, well, you know, you've got all this big equipment now. But, you know, it's taken hours and hours, and sometimes hundreds of hours to get to where you are. Talking of now, yeah. Talking of hundreds of hours, I want to talk about something. You may be aware of it. You may have heard of it. Um, you may have experienced it. It was Mother's Day here in the UK on Sunday, and my daughters organised a Sunday roast. Um, Sunday roast at one of my daughter's houses, and we went. And it was lovely. Um, it was the daughter who lives with Mr. Dalek JD, the YouTuber. So I got there. And I was introduced to the future. I mean, properly. Being an old fart, as I am, um, I've got to say, it blew my mind. I mean, absolutely. It's hard to explain the awe, and uh, I've talked a lot before about feeling like a child, and there's nothing wrong with that awe and that excitement and being wowed by something. This was, now I've played VR, PSVR, on PS4. I don't own PSVR 2 of uh, PlayStation 5, I don't have it yet. It's a bit expensive, I haven't got it yet. Um, my VR experiences have been fairly limited to that, which is old technology now, it's been around a while, but for the PS4, and there's all the Oculus and all the, the Meta Quests and all the things that have come out since. The standalone ones where you don't actually need a computer, it's all stored and done wirelessly, and. You know, it's incredible with the headsets and controllers in your hands and that kind of thing so anyway get there and uh mr Tight jd says do you want to check something cool with us? I said, yeah cool you know that's it he had one of the um apple vision pro the, the new system now it's not available in the uk yet he had it shipped from the us i didn't ask the cost i said was it expensive and he said yes that's all i know <laughs> i honestly don't even look I would be horrified to think, especially getting it shipped as well. Um, this is next level unlike anything I've ever experienced. It was a headset, and I said to him, this is a, oh, it's, it's amazing, OLED lenses, oh, sorry, like, oh, mini OLED screens basically. Um, and um, I said, oh, you've got controllers for hands. He said, oh no, you don't need them. I said, what do you mean you don't need them? If you don't need them, we'll set up, I'll show you what I mean. So in setting up... Oh. And like I say, this may be, you know, you may be completely okay with all this kind of stuff, and it, you know, but, so you hold your hands up in front of the, sort of, the lenses, and it looks at your hands, it scans your hands, I don't know, <laughs> it's wizardry, it's witchcraft, it's, it's um, out of this world stuff, um, and it just from that point knew where my hands were, even when they weren't in front of the lenses. So normally, you know, it, it will track, it will track your hands, it will track the controllers, the sensors in the controllers. I didn't have any controllers, but it knew where my hands were. Even if my hands weren't in view of the, the goggles, which was the first kind of, you know, mind absolutely shattered into a million pieces. Um, so, uh, you know, we went through a couple of sort of test program things and um, there was one with dinosaurs and it was you were there i mean I, I can't describe what's very clever is you can see through the lenses out the other side so whereas normally you put a headset on and you're completely shut off to the rest of the world with this you could set it so it was opaque so you could you could no transition you could see through but you can adjust that so if you wanted to reach out and grab a drink or a cup or you know you can see other people in the room but then when this stuff comes up on the screen that sort of disappears this whole dinosaur thing and but they react to you which was terrifying and it was so real i mean so real and he said watch at the start there's a butterfly and it sits on these letters and then when the butterfly takes off he said put your hand up anywhere it doesn't matter where just put your hand up and it will land on your finger <laughs> just next bang there wasn't much of my mind left to be blown at this point but that was just wow then these big dinosaurs come on they have a bit of fight and then they, they sort of turn to look at you and come towards you but then it kind of comes out of the screen that you're looking at. I mean, literally right up to your face. It was 
unbelievable just craziness but the, the, the actual manipulation of the controls it, it does a test where it, it tracks your retinas it tracks what your eyes are looking basically um, so when you're interacting with menus you look towards whichever one it is whether it's closing down a menu opening a menu choosing a selection of the menu you just look at it and then to, to, uh, to choose it you just pinch your two fingers together but again my fingers were down on my lap I was just looking pinch my fingers bump it would how how did it know my where my hands were how did it know that I was pinching my fingers together how, you know I, I don't know it's crazy and it was very intuitive the controls it was it was in, incredibly clever so and he said oh do you want to watch a movie so okay that sounds cool you know you know, you know pick what you want so we go into Disney and had a look and Dad Empire Strikes Back was there for you know what love me a bit of Star Wars so um, he said you can also choose your environment so okay and there was a few different environments he said, if you choose Disney cinema so you click on that and it puts you virtually into a cinema in the cinema seat and you're looking around and it's a cinema <laughs> when you start the film it comes up on the cinema screen which he said you can just watch it just as a screen you can just watch out there. You can watch as um Yeah, just literally just as a, a screen. So you can watch a film, no problem at all. But it was like you were in a cinema, which was pretty cool. Um But then I and, and then you know your brain suddenly goes, hang on a minute, what's going on? Um I could hear the movie. And you'll go, Well yeah, well, no. I didn't have any earbuds in. I didn't have anything in my ears. So I said to everyone else in the room, can you hear the movie? No. So how, how am I hearing this? Unless this is being beamed directly into my brain, how am I hearing it? And I mean hearing it. The bass quality, the, the, the sound profile was staggering. And it's, I think it's based off a of hearing aid technology, but it, it sends the sound from the headset kind of round and uses your ear cavity as I assume like a bass chamber and you can turn the volume up and down but no one else can really hear unless you put it on maximum volume again I it was unlike anything I've ever experienced and the sound quality was phenomenal I mean just phenomenal I'm gonna go and get the trailer and I'll, and then I'll talk about the final bit I'll say the final bit there was so much it was just wow I know sorry I'm waffling this is the first episode we're getting some harvesting done I just need to earn some money I thought while I'm doing that I just don't remember this ex amazing experience and that's what I've always done I talk about my life talk about what's been going on and that kind of stuff and yeah let me go and get the trailer you know what just struck me as uncanny at the end of my let's play on here all those years ago I had a T8 and both the tractors that I was given for these contracts are both New Hollands I can't remember the last time I drove a T8 they always sound so good the new Genesis and oh just brilliant anyway we'll head over and actually where we've got to deliver it to, deliver it to is Grain Elevator West which is right next to Field 5 so we should be able to find it anyway so so that I mean that was you know as if that wasn't staggering enough. Um, actually, it's not the last thing. Anyway, <laughs> regardless. He, uh, so he said, oh, you know, if you think that's good, he said, there's a few films on there which are 3D. I said, what? He said, oh, yeah, honestly. Um, so you, bear in mind you're not wearing 3D glasses. <laughs> so, um, I'm, yeah, I... So, okay. So he says to me, right, put on Avatar, the new one, the watery one. Um, so I put that on, and again, sound, just unbelievable, next level. It was 3D. But 3D, unlike anything I've experienced in my life. I've been to the cinema, I've seen 3D films, worn 3D glasses, done all the whole, you know. And it's awesome, and it's really cool. This was ultra high definition OLED quality 3D phenomenal sound quality like you were in the film I mean just I again how 
I'm, I'm convinced this technology is being beamed directly into your brain. It's bypassing your eyes. It, it's not even bothering with that anymore. It, it was... I, I can't describe. And that's why I say, <laughs> I don't even want to know what the, the cost is. I mean, at the moment, the cost must be catastrophic. And I'm sure people will put it in the comments what it costs. Um, I didn't want to know. Uh, it's like ruining a man magic trick, isn't it? I, mean, I suppose it's not really, because it's still... And when I say it's the future, it is the future. This, if you've ever seen Ready Player One, if you've seen the, and understood the, the deeper meaning of Ready Player One, when the book, from the book and then to the film, that blur and blend, where reality is so rubbish and so awful and so, you know, that everyone just goes into VR because it's where you can be whatever you know i mean that's kind of the you can do that in vr now anyway but that concept of the world the planet becoming more like that where does vr end and reality begin which is which which is better where you know it's that this is that next step this is that link into you know i've always found vr to be immersive and incredible and when i played on my original VR on PS4, I've said this a few times before, I played Skyrim, put Skyrim on, everyone was at work, I was at home, and I think eight hours went past, and it seemed like a click of the fingers. I was just so in it. This is next level. This is, I mean, you can tell some of those games, it's a computer game. The stuff I experienced was so real, so scarily real. It is that step towards Ready Player One. It is that people will want to be in that more. People will be in it so much that you'll be being fed intravenously. You know, it's that, it is that scary step towards that. It really, really is. Um, so, yeah, the future. I mean, it is when it becomes affordable, when it becomes more everyone can have it, when it becomes more normal every day, when everyone's like, oh yeah, you know, everyone's got it, everyone's using it, everyone's, you know, it's, um, I don't know. But then, obviously, I, I'm talking about OLED, I've been looking to try and get an OLED monitor. Um, and they're not cheap. I say they're not cheap, you can't get them, let's just say that. You can get OLED laptop screens, so you can get OLED laptops. You've got OLED lenses in a lot of the new, um, VR headsets. You can get OLED TVs, and the OLED TVs come down to about a 40-something inch. Um, and there's nothing below that, or there hadn't been, on some I'm saying. So, there hadn't been anything below that. So I thought, out in the, in the studio, in the Man Cave studio, to have one of my screens on the PS5 OLED, oh man, it's, it's just wow. Um, I haven't, but I want to. So then, so I do all this, and then he says to us, he's something really cool. <laughs> okay, just, just, yep, cool. So I go into his studio, and he's got a curved OLED monitor. Now, most refresh rates, if you've got your refresh rate to get the, you know, so you don't get any screen flicker, you don't get lag, you don't get, you know, people run at 30, 60, 120. This runs standard at 240 hertz. Um, the, the, image quality color quality was just next level i mean incredible but it's it's a gaming monitor it is so they've come bridge that gap between laptop and tv so and they said it was the, one of the first companies i can't remember who it was made by but there's another company making them as well now um but again price wise i mean i don't know he didn't say what his one was but he showed me that this other company that's making them as well oh, i can't remember the names but for a laptop, it's a laptop, for, for a gaming monitor, it was something like, I want to say 14, 1500 pounds. It's a lot of money for a monitor. Um, like I said, I don't know how much his was, but it was, um, yeah, I, I, I had, it was an incredible experience. And it's left me feeling very uh, conflicted, I guess, that the gaming world, the world, not just the gaming world, but the world we're moving towards is in equal measure awe-inspiring and terrifying all at the same time, I, I think. Um, I might have mentioned this a while ago, my, my, I don't know, Mrs. Cindy P's um, mum is very ill at the moment, she has Alzheimer's. Um, but before, when she started to get unwell, I would go over and we'd talk and she'd ask me about my channel and I was 
talking about virtual reality stuff she was asking about you know because i think she came here for dinner one of the times and the kids had the vr on and she said then it was very poignant she said how does that work with people that have um what's the best way of putting it not mental difficulties that's the wrong word um but who have proclivities towards a certain way of thinking a way of life maybe who for them the real world is a difficult place to maneuver anyway she said isn't it dangerous for people that have that kind of mindset to be thrust potentially into a virtual world where for people that are more susceptible will they understand the the divide between reality and virtual reality or will it blur very quickly and that was one of the first times I stepped away and thought I'd never thought of it like that because you can't monitor it you can't decide who has it who doesn't have it and that is quite a scary thought and I think moving forward that that becomes more relevant doesn't it anyway <laughs> I've waffled enough I've got more harvesting to do we need to earn some money we need to start building this farm back up I have to gonna get uh, I'm gonna have to get some landscaping done get a weed whacker out uh, I'm gonna need a chainsaw actually can I cut some of those trees down with a chainsaw chainsaw or a mulcher I'm just thinking some of those larger bushes I can't remember how I can remove those there are various different ones available some say they remove bushes and I've found they don't always um, we need to just tidy the yard up maybe a little bit um, yeah, um, I'm not sure about the horse pasture because I don't want to do horses. I was starting to say earlier, I might do pigs, but like do pigs on a large scale. I've done chickens on a large scale on Edgewater. We've done cows a lot. We've done, we do sheep. We've done sheep a fair bit on different ones. Um, we tend to do chickens. Chickens are a nice straightforward one to do. So are sheep. Pigs I've done, but I've done pigs and often I've bought pig food or I've bought a pig food mixer. I'm wondering, now I have got seasons on, which is going to be a lot more difficult. I haven't got precision farming on, but seasons on. Um, whether or not to, to try to gather together all the constituent parts to feed the pigs. So rather than buy pig food, actually feed them the, the things they require. I haven't done that for a while, maybe. That, like, again, this is, it's, I'm just thinking out loud. Those silos just off that direction, that's where we did have been to, so we haven't got to go far with this. I completed the contract on the last load. I've done two full loads of 52,000 litres, and we've got the little bit left in here now. Um, the excess has paid pretty well, I have to say. What were we on, 1,384? And then we've got this little bit left, so this little bit. I'll take that, and then we are contract complete. We'll take the equipment back. I need to go back. We'll pick up the plow, do the plowing contract. This actually does bode a little bit better because it does mean we've got a little bit more money um, for what's the word for leasing stuff for doing the fertilizing contract that's going to require a bit um so i'll see you back over there to grab the plow we're not going to get the fertilizing done in this episode but we'll have a little bit of money um and we are working towards whatever comes next there is a baling contract available that pays okay with a fair bit of equipment i may tackle that next okay back at the store harvester will get brought back and we can complete on that so that pays us 14409 after the lease cost of the equipment and machinery. I'll happily take that. I'm thinking parsnip. That could take quite some time. I mean, that's got a fair bit of equipment with it. Um, no, it can't be. Have I got it installed? That's not the quick bail, is it? That can't be offering the quick bail as a... Can it? You know what? I'm going to borrow items. I'm curious. Whoa! 
Whoa! Okay, stood right in the way. Huh? I... That is the quick bail. The New Holland quick, quick bail. The New Holland version of... Um... I didn't even think I had that selected. Okay, that's weird. I mean, not weird. And we even get some, um... Silage additive as well. Really? Well, this would be a nice old contract. We won't get on that yet. Let's get the, the plan one done first. Um, the fertilising contract, I've made a decision. I'm going to do something different with that. The fertilising one pays a lot. I'm going to go manure. I always go to chemical fertiliser, and it's going to take me longer doing manure, especially if I'll have a look around and see if I can find a cheap-ish muck spreader with an okay capacity but fairly cheap. I don't want to spend a lot of money, and obviously I need a tractor that can pull it. Um... Because I, I always default back to standard sort of chemical fertiliser, get the, the front and rear mounted thing and then get the pallets of it. I'm not. We'll go up to the animal dealer, we'll buy manure from the animal dealer, we'll spread manure. We could maybe do slurry at some point. I'm thinking on this one I might spray more than I, I normally do, just because I want I want to do something different. I want to use some different equipment and machinery. That being said, I've got plowing to do. <laughs> out to field six. definitely New Holland heavy, isn't it? Every vehicle, I've, every tractor I've had has been in New Holland. It's a New Holland, New Holland baler-ish. The mower shouldn't take too long. Um, actually, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Because this mows and windrows. Yet, we've got a windrow as well. So we can skip that step because that will windrow for us, which is perfect. Then that we can pick up with, and then, well, that, that shouldn't be a bad contract. If, um, that's another one. Am I going to collect bales? If I have bales left over, do I start collecting them? That will work if I'm going to do cows, because we're in silage. To be fair, selling silage bales, we need the money at the moment. I, I don't think... Um, I don't think keeping hold of them at the moment would be a good idea. It's good to know there are baling contracts that are coming up. But I don't know what we're going to do about cows. If I'm going to go down the pig route, I'm really not going to necessarily need silage. That being said, if we do decide to buy the biogas plant, the biogas plant does the same as it did on um, Alma. It produces methane as a byproduct. So we could, at some point, buy the biogas plant. We I mean, maybe do just a colossal silage harvest on something. Maybe. Again, I don't know. We'll see. There's a voice that appears here. I'm going mad. Why didn't it do it that time? I thought I was losing my mind. And even Farm Dog looked up because we both heard a voice. Oh no, did I dream that? Okay. Stop talking. <laughs> um, this is the field, field six. Beacon's off. Uh, this is going to take quite some time, isn't it? I've just suddenly realised. And also that thing when you start now again. It's interesting how you... Um, you're, I know, I've said it so many times. I know I keep saying that, and the fact that I have said it so many times. How you become so much more reluctant to hire a worker because you haven't got as much spare money. And then when you get further down the line, especially when, like on Alma, when I got to a point where I had quite a few productions, and when you're making a bit of money every month, every day, whatever it might be, you don't mind then because you know, if I hire a worker, it's all right because tomorrow I'll earn X amount back that will cover the cost of my workers. So when you get to a point where even if you put in, maybe if, even it's just a greenhouse, if you said, you know what, I'm going to do one greenhouse. One greenhouse that requires just water, maybe. So it's not too much of a burden, not too much of a hassle. Any money that I make from selling the products in the greenhouse pays for my workers. You know, it's, it's that, you kind of offset it. Decide what how you're going to deal with your finances. And the fact, when you can get to a point where you can hire workers. But again, we don't have multiple bits of machinery. I mean, I suppose I could set a worker off on this, then go and start on the bailing contract. Um, but I can't afford to have this chugging away. I, I need the money. So I'll have to do one job, then another job, 
we have got field stones on we have got weeds on um, yeah we'll just sort of see what happens um, there is um, a mod that I do want to have a go with it has been recommended and suggested by a few people um, which I'm going to have a go with one of the reasons I've left field stones on I'm hoping we encounter a quarry at some point or something like that but stones could be quite useful in larger quantities no downside is when you do ploughing contracts um, like this um, you don't ac you don't have access to the field stones it's not like when you can come on with the um, the lizard forage pickup and you can pick up straw swaths when I'm doing this and I'm thinking now my brain's saying all oh, these stones on this field that we can collect now am I going to use crazy machinery on this let's play I don't know I, I don't know whether I, because this is indulgent in so much as I'm coming back to revisit a let's play I did a long time ago this is a nostalgia thing and like I said, it's, it's a case of all the stuff that we can do now that we couldn't do then. I want to I want to see that contrast, you know. So there are quite a few bits of equipment and machinery that we could use now that people say, oh, well, they're ridiculous, they're unrealistic, they're, you know. Yeah, they probably are. And, you know, am I going to go like that for the whole thing? No. Might I try a couple of things out? I did on Court Farm. We got the contractor in and we used that big um, um, rock picker. The really wide one by Mac Trucker 921. Um, that I liked because for a lot of people, the rock picking side of things, because you can't always hire a worker as well. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it goes back over the same route it's done. It can be a bit finicky. Um, but having that big rock picker just made life so much easier. I mean, so much quicker. But it's not cheap. So, you know, there's all those trade offs. We'll see. But I guess like this. It's going to take a while. So, I am going to see you on the next one. I'm really pleased to be back. I, I, let me know what you think. I, you know, I, I, there's been so many different maps, and people have suggested over the, over time. Why this one? I don't really know. Right time, right? I don't know. You know, there've been so many that I've looked at and thought, oh, that would be really cool to go back on, and haven't done it. I don't often go back and do let's plays on maps that I've done before. But this one I just wanted to. I can't explain why. It just is what it is. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.